about the car? Is there anything I need to know? Does it stall? Does it smoke? Does it make a lot of noise? Is there gas in it? Anything? Aside from how it looks, the car is cool. We'll take the car and drive all night. What's up, everybody? My name is Jared Jones, and welcome to From the Frame Up, the automotive podcast that weaves in and out of traffic to give you the most important information in the automotive industry and life at large. So I'm really excited today to do the first episode of our podcast, and I'm really thrilled to have with us Senior Marketing Specialist from One Local, Shelby Greer. One Local is a technology and marketing company that focuses on modernizing the way businesses market themselves and engage with customers. Shelby, I want to give you the microphone to give the people just a brief introduction about who you are, what you do at One Local and what One Local does. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here today. Uh, Just a little bit more in terms of who we are at One Local. Like you said, we are a technology and marketing company that focuses on modernizing the way businesses market and engage with their customers online. And we really do offer an all-in-one solution to help drive that digital customer experience. Uh, Businesses are really standing out online, attracting new customers, and also retaining them for life. Our expertise really lays with working with brick and mortar businesses that provide local services and working with them to make sure that they have the marketing and technology insights so that they can stay ahead of the curve and bring in new customers. I work on the success team and my role is to work with these businesses on a day-to-day basis to make sure that they're set up with our solutions so that they're able to engage with businesses and other customers in the digital space so that they're really standing out, attracting new customers, and people can't help but notice them online. That's awesome. I apologize for stepping on you there. I was very excited. Uh, I just think that what what One Local does and what you do for One Local is just perfect in terms of where it fits within that kind of small business ownership, the bricks and mortar location, but that also needs to have kind of that online footprint. So full disclosure, you know, I'm the communication specialist at CSN Collision Centers. CSN Collision Centers is a network of more than 200 collision repair locations across Canada. From the Frame Up is our podcast where we kind of get the opportunity to take people off of off of the floor at the shop or out of the office to kind of talk to them about things that are relevant to automotive and absolutely excited to have one local on with us for our first episode so great introduction in terms of what one local does and what you do there uh should probably talk about the background because i do want it does it's a bit of a segue into what we're going to talk about today so obviously uh, a bit of a jordan guy myself they've got a really kind of niche um kind of online experience where you can't really get their products easily and so that kind of shapes how I relate to that particular brand and establishing a brand uh, is one of the things we're probably going to talk about today. Uh, So obviously, you know, COVID, right? This is, this is basically shifted the way that people do business in an online marketplace, uh, whether you have a bricks and mortar location or whether you're primarily online or through social media, let's talk a little bit about what the pandemic has done to kind of abruptly shift the way that people do business in a primarily digital space. You know, what do you guys see at One Local in terms of who you work with, whether it's clients or whether you work with other other industry partners? What are some of the challenges that that businesses are facing, whether they're already formatted for that or whether they need to get up to speed? Yeah, absolutely. The reality is how customers find a business to engage with has really gone from offline to online and single touch to multi-touch. The reality is there's a lot of unseen actions that take place when somebody's searching for a business to engage with. So it's really important that businesses establish a comprehensive digital presence so that they're really standing out online and able to attract these customers so that they engage with you. It's also important that businesses have tools available to engage with customers in the digital space. So it's easy to have that back and forth rather than having to rely on traditional methods of phone calls, you know, people walking by their shops, seeing their signs and, and coming in that way. With COVID, we just saw an acceleration of this. You know, there were businesses that had a need for this before, and now it's become just that much more important because people aren't out and about and engaging the way that they used to. 
Right. And so what, in terms of the businesses that are, that were ready for that kind of shift and the ones that aren't, what would you say are a couple examples of some, some really good tools that are there, they're at the disposal or they're being uh, leveraged by the good ones that the not so good ones can take advantage of? Yeah, absolutely. I actually recently had a great experience with a business that was really set up for this. I had some repairs that had to be done on my car. So like a, a typical consumer, the first thing I did was I opened up my cell phone and, and did a quick Google search for what I needed. Um, I went through a few different Google reviews that popped up for a few different dealerships and ultimately settled on one that had a high volume of positive reviews. Um, and when I landed on this dealership's website, it was really nice and modern and easy to navigate, but they also had uh, easy ways for me to communicate with them. So in this case, I opted to communicate via text message. And I was actually able to fully book my appointment via text message with them. And they were able to send me a, a confirmation code via text message as well. On the day of my appointment, they texted me. Um, when I arrived at the dealership, I just had to input a code and drop off my keys. And I was able to, to drive away. Um, even throughout the course of the repairs, I had service techs that were texting me with updates so that we could have that quick back and forth. And it really made things really easy for me in terms of uh, getting this done and, and finding a business in that digital space. That's excellent. And I think that, that that also kind of points to some of the the transitions that have happened fairly rapidly within the automotive space in terms of how we connect with our customers. Right. So I do think the you know the, the matter of convenience is probably at the forefront because you know as as we all know when you search on Google you're going to get 10 results, right? And there might not be a huge difference between that first person on the results list and that 10th uh, business on the results list. So the one that offers you a more unique experience that that aligns with what you expect tends to be the one that that you know that you want to leverage. Um, I do want to talk a little bit about that Google aspect. I want to pull on that thread a little bit more. So, you know, you, like me, would go online and, and search, you know, the business that you want to use or the service that you want to uh, to purchase or the product that you want to purchase on Google, much like anybody else. Uh, you know, my background, uh, case in point. Um, what What is the importance or what is the value of having a Google My Business page? And then secondarily to that, the value of having positive Google reviews. Yeah, absolutely. It's really important because this is where people are starting their search. It's it's not offline anymore. It is online. So having that Google My Business listing is like your digital storefront. It's how people are finding you. And the reality is 91% of people actually trust online reviews as much as a personal recommendation or, or testimonial. So this is what people are looking to when they're looking to find credibility in a business or, or gain confidence in a business and making sure to consistently have new reviews coming in helps signal that you are satisfying your customers and are able to provide that exceptional customer journey. Right, for sure. I think that that you touched on on kind of what I want to use as a segue, that customer journey, mm -hmm. right? Like being able to provide a full cycle positive customer experience is is so important and i think the social proof obviously from the google reviews and from having a google my business page being present in that digital space is so important and i think that 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 social proof of being able to say yeah shelby had a really good experience at i'm hoping was a csn location where you got the repairs done hopefully not collision but we'll, we'll talk about that offline um it, it's, it provides that kind of credibility to be able to say, this is a business that I too want to use. It's that it's that digital uh, word of mouth kind of proof. And that that segues with kind of what I want to talk about in terms of the, the customer journey. You know, the first step when we talk about the customer journey is awareness, right? So it's being present in that marketplace, which now is no longer just billboards and storefronts. It's like you said, the digital storefront. So when when you guys at One Local talk about awareness and the importance of, of your clients and, and small businesses or medium sized businesses establishing that awareness in today's marketplace, what what is the context that you guys talk about it and expand a little bit on the awareness piece for me, if you could. Yeah, a big pain point that I often encounter is people are working so hard to grow their business. But a lot of times we're not thinking from the perspective of how people are trying to find you. 
it's really important that you're building that digital presence. And it's it's not just about website, it's about your Google reviews. It's about, you know, targeted online ads to get you to the top of Google. You just want to make sure that you're covering all your bases so people can't help but notice you. Um, you know, a lot of people have a, a loyal existing customer base and that's fantastic. But in order to bring in those new customers, you need to be able to offer that digital first option for that group of people who are looking for that. There's still going to be people who want to engage with your business via phone call or coming in in person. But by not offering that digital first experience, you're leaving a lot of potential business on the table for people who are looking for that. Absolutely. I, I 100% agree that digital first experience, it's the wave of the future. I think uh, although my my hairline might not indicate it, I am still a millennial. So I, it's it's just such an important aspect of of what that customer journey is, is mm -hmm. it absolutely starts with digital. Everybody has a smartphone these days. It's the easiest way to do anything. Even, for example, if you're walking by a bricks and mortar store, you might just walk by and Google them on your way to wherever you're going you know, it's just, it's a different kind of experience for, for every customer. And I do want to pull on, on another thread there that you mentioned um, that what are the, what are the best ways to kind of establish that awareness that one local provides? Is there, is there, a, is there a service offering? Is there something that you guys are using that's a tangible as a small business owner, I can reach out and get this and it's going to help me. Absolutely. We do provide an all-in-one solution to help businesses with this. It's all about that comprehensive digital presence. So making sure that all of your bases are covered. Um, you know, it's important to make sure that you're consistently getting new reviews on your Google My Business listing. You want to ensure that you have a fresh, modern website that's easy to convert customers on, provides them the option to engage with your business in their preferred method of communication. You know, you want to make sure that you have those targeted online reviews getting you to the top of Google and also covering all your social profiles, whether it be your, your Facebook page or your Instagram page, so that when customers are going through those unseen steps to engage with your business, you are fully covered and there are no gaps there. I love it. The unseen steps, the uh, the ghost in the machine, so to speak. I'm not sure if that's the right way to use that term, but it, it seems right. It feels right. There, there's so much going on in the background uh, before you actually get that lead opportunity or that eventual conversion in terms of how the customer is relating to and communicating with you and your business, even if they're not speaking to somebody that directly represents your business, you know, a, a warm body, so to speak. So I want to talk a little bit about how customers get there. Yeah. So I want to touch on search and, and the importance of search and what businesses can leverage or what businesses can use from a tooling perspective to kind of get the most out of search. You know, we talk about, uh, you know, Google AdWords, we talk about search engine optimization. What are the best ways, the best practices that one local would recommend in terms of how to get more traffic using search? Yeah, it's a great question. When I talk about Google, I always talk about the three main places of real estate on there. You have your Google reviews, uh, the targeted ads that show up on top, as well as the organic results. If you have a solution that's working for you to make sure that you're showing up in all of these three places, then people won't be able to avoid your business. You're going to be showing up there. You're going to have that monopoly. People can't ignore you. So paying for those targeted Google ads at the top making sure that you're actively reaching out to customers to get those online reviews and also implementing a strong SEO strategy to move you up through the organic results on Google is your best bet to make sure that you're consistently attracting those customers and outperforming your competitors. I love that. That's 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 going to be the the line that we get uh we get James to cut is going to be outperforming your competitors. When you talk about when you talk about um when you talk about organic, right? Mm -hmm. I, I do want to do a bit of a juxtaposition of the organic versus the paid. So when you talk about organic, what what do you mean when you talk about organic search versus the paid search? Yeah, so the page certs are your ads that are showing up right at the top of Google. That's going to get you right to the top there. And the organic is everything that shows up under that. So it's not a paid ad. It's where your website is showing up um, organically in the search results. I always like to think of it um, with 
paid ads, it's like uh, paying rent. You're renting that space at the top of Google. Whereas with SEO, search engine optimization, it's like you're paying down a mortgage. You, When you're investing in an SEO strategy, you're paying long term to own that real estate on Google that's higher up on the page. So investing in a quality website that is modern, easy to navigate and has an SEO strategy actively working for it is really beneficial in the long run to make sure that you have ownership over those organic results. And I assume based on your expertise in responding to that question that One Local has a ton of solutions available in terms of different ways to approach both organic search as well as paid search optimization. Uh, thank you for that uh, for that informative response. I just wanted to clarify both for the viewers and for myself because uh, sometimes I struggle with it. Uh, I think that we've we've talked a lot about the search part of it. We've talked about you know the awareness part. I, obviously, the next step is is reputation management uh, in terms of the customer journey, which is massively important. Uh, you know, being a, a marketing and communications professional myself, the reputation management is something that uh, keeps me up at night at times, both in good ways and in bad ways. Uh, but I do want to talk a little bit about what that is and why it's important. So can you can you offer a little bit of perspective on on the reputation part of the customer journey? Absolutely. Uh, when people are, are looking on a line, those reviews are really important. As we talked about earlier, it really signals credibility for your business and also helps instill confidence in customers who are reading them. And it's really important that we're consistently getting fresh reviews as well. Um, you need to have new reviews coming in. You can't just rely on, on old, old reviews because people won't really trust them. And in order to make sure that you're always getting fresh reviews coming in, you need to actively ask for that review from your customer. Because the reality is, you know, people are busy. They're not that likely to go onto Google, search your business, get on your Google My Business profile and leave a review. However, if you actively reach out to them and make it easy for them to leave that review and take away those barriers, it'll be much more likely that they'll follow through and provide that positive feedback for you. Um, we really like to encourage our customers to use our solution that makes it easy for them to send out a text message to their customers requesting that review on Google. So that, again, you're taking away those barriers and making it really easy for somebody to leave that feedback for you so that we're consistently bringing in new positive reviews. That's excellent. And it's such a good point in terms of the the new reviews, because it, it, it does, it can almost work against you when you have reviews that are a little bit dated, uh, despite being very good, right? So if I, you know, if I'm looking up, uh, I don't know, a dry cleaner or something like that, and hey, you know, 4.5 4 stars, it's pretty good, right? Anything above four, do I have that right? Anything above four is generally, okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm on point. But the, la the last reviews from like six months ago or seven months ago, and it's like, well, did they not clean any any shirts in the last six months? Like, how come they haven't had any satisfied customers in the last six months? So it's it's a really important thing to kind of caretake and cultivate what that looks like online in terms of the timeliness of those reviews and and ultimately requesting them. So I've kind of I've kind of shown my hand a little bit. What what are some of the ways that businesses can kind of ask for that proof? You know, like we we know that we want the review. Right. We've done a good job. We believe that we've done a good job. You know, Shelby's smiling when she gets her keys back. She says, thank you very much. Hopefully I never see you again if it's a collision repair. But sometimes it happens. What what what's the best way to kind of ask, hey, you know, I, I'd love if you'd leave us a review. Is it that straightforward or, or are there different approaches to it? Honestly, yeah, it's that straightforward. The best thing I've seen with my clients to make sure that they get the best response rate for reviews is when a customer is finishing with them, when they're wrapping up, they work it into their closed speech and they go, you know, thank you so much for choosing us today. Um, we're going to send you a review request and we'd really appreciate it, you know, if you take 30 seconds to, to leave us a review on Google and let us know how we did. And when they walk out that door, that customer then receives a text message immediately with a, a link to leave that review on their Google My Business listing. This is a fantastic way to do it because you're priming that customer to expect that review request and also instilling a little bit of accountability. It's much more likely that they're going to follow through and, and leave that review. And when you're sending it immediately after they leave your collision center or your business, it's still fresh in their mind, the experience that they had with you. So it's that much easier for them to, to leave their feedback. And what I have realized is, you know, especially recently in our current COVID landscape, people are relying on reviews more than ever 
to make sure that they're confident with the business. So it's more important than ever before that businesses are taking this extra step to keep those new reviews coming in. Perfect. I love that answer because it, it touches on all the things that that I think are so important for us as you know as collision repair and, and automotive repair. Uh, it's you're kind of operating from a position of deficit already in yeah. terms of that customer's experience, right? You know, if you if you look specifically, you know, for CSN, you got somebody that's coming in there as a result of something they didn't want to happen. Right? It's mm -hmm. different when it's you know you got to get your brakes done, you're getting an oil change, yeah, I have to do it. You know, somebody rear ends you, you've got to get your, you know, you got to get your bumper and your taillight fixed. That's a, that's a different experience. So you're already operating from somebody that doesn't want to be at your business necessarily. So making sure that you offer that seamless experience and then at the close of it, ask for that review so that other people know that they can come there and expect similar treatment is such an important step. And I think that that's something that I think the industry at large needs to work towards in terms of, you know, kind of cementing into that process is being able to talk about the justification for why other customers should come there. And the way to do that isn't just word of mouth or, you know, telling your cousin or telling your nephew or whoever, it's actually asking for that digital proof. And so I think the Google reviews, obviously, you know, the best and most intuitive way to do that. Uh, great conversation on the reputation management. I want to talk about the next step in the journey. I want to talk about conversion. So, you know, conversion for salespeople is the bread and butter, right? Like this is this is how we're putting food on the table. Um, this is everything that we're we're aiming towards is getting that conversion. So from one local's perspective, Shelby, what is important about actually turning that lead or turning that sales opportunity into a conversion goes without saying that's, you know, salespeople and, and small businesses, that's how we're getting paid. But what are some of the tools that small businesses, medium businesses can use either either offered by one local or, or just within the within the software as a service marketplace that can help get that conversion and finally land that sale? Yeah, that's an excellent question. Of course, the end goal of your digital presence is to convert these people into customers. So we need to make sure that you have those tools in place to, to facilitate this. And one of the biggest steps is your website. This really is an anchor to all of your digital marketing efforts. And you want to make sure that you have various ways for people to convert on your website. And the reason for this is we all have a preference in terms of how we want to engage with the business. You're going to have those people who want to call your business. So having your phone number displayed really easily there that's easy to click on for people is really important. You're going to have people who are interested in emailing you. So having that contact form that people can reach out to is key. Um, some people are going to want a text message. A, a high volume of people nowadays are going to want a text message. So looking for um, a text messaging widget on the website there so that people can easily communicate there is, is um, going to make sure that you're, you're covered for that portion of customers. And also an online booker. This is huge. I know myself, I am guilty of doing a Google search, um, picking a business and immediately checking if they have a way for me to book right online because that's just what works with my busy schedule. And if a website doesn't have an online booker, I'm the type who will jump off, pop back on Google and go to the next website to see if they do. So having all of those conversion tools available on your site is going to make sure that you can take people out of their search so that they're not continuing to, to go through the list of competitors. That's it. I'd love, that's the closing for sure, right? Take people out of their search and stop looking for competitors, right? Make them stop looking elsewhere. Yeah. If, you, if you've done everything that you're supposed to do, the most important part in order to get that conversion is to stop them from looking. And I think that the online booking tool is such an interesting aspect of what that digital journey looks like for the customer because they're, they're already there, right? They're either on their smartphone or they're on their laptop. Um, they're, they're looking through different options that they have. And so they're willing to spend the time and go through a form or go through a booking calendar and take that extra 30 or 60 or 90 seconds, whatever it takes to be able to get to that end goal. And if you don't have that solution, they're just going to keep looking. And I think that's such an important step that, again, when it comes to automotive, I think on the on the dealership side, that's something that's been captured. It's something that's that's regularly used in the collision repair sector. I think that that's more prevalent for sure. Uh, but there's definitely some businesses that just don't you know, they don't think that they need it. Uh, it might be a situation where oh, I always I know my customers, you know, we're in a smaller market. You know, I know John, he's always going to come by. 
uh, or he'll or give me a call or something like that. And I think that it does leave a little bit of uh, a little bit of opportunity on the table when you don't at least have that as an option for consumers. Uh, it's a fairly low cost solution. It's easy to integrate, and it's obviously easy to use for you know for the new digital customer, the digital savvy customer. So great answers there. Uh, I want to talk kind of our last section about experience. And so I do have I do have some stats for that that I wanted to prove that I'm not the only one that's an expert uh, on this. Uh, Shelby's not the only one that's an expert on this. I have my own statistics and my own uh, my own research that I've done. So Dealer Socket is a, a software company uh, out of the U.S. and they did a survey recently. I, I read Automotive News, and so I, I get all of their newsletters, and it said 78 percent of of new car buying customers say that the experience influences directly whether or not they actually make the purchase, mm -hmm. which is crazy to think about. Almost eight out of 10 customers that are willing to purchase a vehicle, right? So we'll talk the automotive sector, would say that they're influenced so heavily by the experience either at the dealership or now the online showroom that they would consider going elsewhere to make their second most expensive purchase of their life just because of how they how they experience that that interaction at the dealership or online, and that to me kind of blows my mind, and I want to I want to explain why. You know, a house and a car, two most expensive purchases you're ever going to make. I really really want this car. I've been shopping for it. I've researched it. You know, the salesperson has provided me all this information. I've gone through the process of deciding which one I want. But if I don't have a good experience at that dealership or digitally in terms of how I'm looking for that vehicle to the point that I'm gonna make that purchase, I'll actually consider buying a different vehicle or going to a different location to get it. And that to me is just like, it's it's so eye-opening because it means that the, the experience that the consumer is having is more important than the product or the service that they're purchasing. And that and that's just a really interesting, it's a whole nother podcast that we could do about the psyche of the consumer. But I wanted to get I wanted to get your feel both from you know as a, as an industry expert and and one local's perspective on how do you cultivate and how do you manage the customer experience and what are some of the tools that we can use small businesses and medium businesses uh, to leverage providing that customer experience. Absolutely, the customer experience is extremely important. What you just said it hits the nail on the head. I know myself, even when I recently went to to get some repairs done on my car, I actually chose a business that was a little bit further away from me. So it was a little bit less convenient, but I just had a better experience with them in the digital space, which is why I made that choice. I think um, the experience and the product are now tied in together. They're not two separate things. So if you're providing a great product, but you're not able to provide an exceptional customer experience and customer journey, um, you're just leaving business on the table. Uh, in terms of how you can really manage this, making sure that you have tools available to communicate with people through their preferred method of communication is key. People are busy, like they have so many things going on. Um, nowadays, people really do like to communicate via text message. It gives them the ability to answer when they have time without having to play phone tag with a business to get the answers that they need. So this is a really, really simple step that businesses can work into their overall business practices to keep their customers happy and provide a seamless experience. That's excellent. I think that it's such a, it's a, first of all, great response by you. And I think it's just such an important and overlooked part of the, of the entire customer journey. I think that it's, it's definitely been a focus in, you know, in recent times and more probably abruptly as a result of, you know, as a result of COVID because they're now so many options online, right? That it's, it, you can just, it's an, it seems like it's an endless sea of different ways that you can get ultimately the product or service that you want. And so that experience is, is that, you know, I can, I can have a bad experience at a particular business and then I never have to go back there again because there's another online solution that offers the exact same thing. So, you know, when you've got customers that don't necessarily have to arrive at that particular location, for example, you know, what you mentioned driving a little bit farther away to get your repairs done because of the experience, I think it's the exact same thing from a digital perspective. I'll just keep scrolling. I'll go to the next page, right? I'm not one of those people that looks at the top 10 listings. I'll go three and four pages deep if I don't see what I want in terms of the Google result. So I think it's such an important point. Um, 
I think that kind of sums up what we wanted to do in terms of discussing the uh, the abrupt change that's come as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic to the digital customer journey. We've gone through the entire customer life cycle. You've provided really good responses and insight in terms of all of those different verticals and, and how businesses can leverage them. So we're kind of coming up on the last lap. We've gone over a ton of valuable information. Want to give the mic back to you. Any shout outs? Where can people find you? Um, you know, what's give us the one local website, uh, anything that you want to plug here towards the end, feel free. Yeah, absolutely. You can find us at onelocal.com. We do offer an all in one solution to help manage your online digital presence to make sure that you're really standing out online and attracting those customers. We want to make sure you're outshining your competition and people can't help but notice you when they're searching for your services online. So again, you can find us at onelocal.com. Um, our team will be happy to meet with you and discuss how you can best fit our solutions into your ongoing business practices to help take your business to that next level. Awesome. Well, uh, that's it. That's the checkered flag here on From the Frame Up, the first episode of From the Frame Up. Thank you so much, Shelby Greer, Senior Marketing Specialist at One Local. Check her out at onelocal.com. You can check us out at fromtheframeup.ca and that's it. Thanks everybody for joining and for watching and we'll see you guys next time. Thanks so much for having me.